Hello there, interneters. Welcome to Horse Rockets Academy. I'm Eliza, and I love meat pizza. And I'm Jacob, and I love to eat the pizza they have here in Germany. In this episode, we're going to talk about, you guessed it, pizza! So we're no experts, but stay tuned. If this is one of your favorite foods, we're probably going to cover facts that you may not already know about it. We're going to still have what I learned this week, but my dad's going to cover it with my siblings. So yeah, we've already recorded them and we're going to do that before we get to the pizza part. So for right now, enjoy listening to Michael, Rainy, and Daniel talk about the different things that they're excited to share with you this week. So let's get started. I'll give it to Michael. Hi there. Okay, Michael, you're coming to visit us today. And something that's a part of every school and every education is memorizing. Do you know how to memorize things, Michael? Yes. You do? Now, you've been memorizing something for church that's very special and important to you. You remember what it's called? You remember what it is, but do you remember that it's called the Articles of Faith? Faith. Right? And you've memorized the first two. So can you do the first one for us, please, for this episode? Go ahead, Michael. We believe in God and the Donald Father and he said Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Alright, good job memorizing that. Now, how old are you right now? Five. And that's a lot of words for a five-year-old to memorize, huh? In addition to learning how to read and the piano and all those other good things you're doing, you learned how to memorize. Okay, so how do you remember how many articles of faith there are? No, that's how many you have memorized right now, but there are 13 of them. That's more than you have fingers for, so you're going to have some more time memorizing, huh? My feet count. You're going to have to use your feet to count too, huh? All right, Michael, thanks for being on this week's show. Bye! Hello, YouTubers. Hello. How are you today, Rainy? Good. Um, I wanted to show you what I've drawn this week. Okay, why don't you grab it for us? Now, it's not going to be in focus unless you're back here, so let's hold it here. Can I hold this? Yes. Okay, will you tell us about it? I'm holding it for you, okay? This is my shirt that I dropped. Uh, and I did the fun to draw eye from me. And um, I draw it. Pretty much the exact same shark as she did. You can go to Fun to Draw on YouTube and you can find some of her videos. Did, and then. Did you do more? Oh, great. I'll, let me hold that one up too. What's this one, Rainy? It's my puffer fish. Oh. It's a super derpy fresh puffer fish. Okay. Well, what does this look like when you're drawing it? What did she say to make it look like? You remember? No. When it's round and then there's the spot in the middle, what does it look like? A pokeball. A pokeball, huh? So you start off with a pokeball and then you make it a pokey fish, huh? Mm hmm Yeah? All right. And then I just made it, um, like, because my neighbor, she can, um, make her eyes go, go to the different sides. So well, it pretty much just looks like her because she can, like, her eyes go down and one goes up, and that one goes, to, um, right, one goes right, one goes left. Oh, she can do cross eyes, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Anything else you want to share with us this week, Rainy? Mm -hmm. No. How about if you wanted Rainy to draw something, can they leave a comment? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you tell them that? Um. For the next video, I'll leave a comment below who for what you want me to draw. Okay. Thanks, Rainy. Hello, YouTubers. Hey. hey, Daniel. What's going on today? Nothing. I just want to mention um some bit about Pokemon. Okay. Cool. What Rainy, do you want to show us? Rainy even mentioned it too. Um, I did. I mostly want to mention um, uh, this thing in this notebook that I've been writing. Well, okay. I haven't been writing for a while now. Um, it's uh, me and Rainy's uh, Pokemon story. You guys might want. You guys could join us if you want. 
email us or uh, Google chat. Okay, so if they want to email you, they would email daniel at horserockets.com. Did you know that? No. Yeah, it'll go to your regular email inbox, but they can email you at daniel at horserockets.com. Okay, so what would they email you about? Because maybe you're going to talk to a big Pokemon fan, and what do you need help with? What do you want them to tell you? What do you want to share with them? Like, so they could be a gym leader or somebody who continues with Rainy, because Rainy's supposed to be like Ash Ketchum. Okay, so cool. That sounds like fun. So I'm the first gym leader, the fighting gym leader, because uh -huh. we can do whatever gym we want. Um, so I found Rainy in the woods, uh, knocked out by Vine Whip. So this is in your story, right? Not in reality. In my story. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. And then what happens next? Then I take him to the Poke Center. Okay, does he win? No, the Poke Center. So he can get healed by Nurse Joy. Oh, well does he get better? Yes. Good, I like Rainy. He wakes up and then he finds a pants age and fights it and catches it. Oh. Then he ends up battling me, oh, which I'm yeah. working on that right now. You're working on how the battle is written? Yeah. So this is part of your free writing or creative writing? Um, For school? Creative writing. Creative writing. Okay, that's an important part. We haven't of done it in a while because uh, somebody at our archery class store and he said pencil and it's the only pencil that Ernie will work with. So we don't know if he's going to continue, so I might continue with you guys. I might have to find another red pencil and maybe Rainy can start writing again because I love it when you guys write. So, and writing is really important. Like, I do a lot of writing when I work. Rainy has like uh, five or ten pages. Wow, that's a lot. Are they little pages or big pages? Uh, they're like this size. That's still a lot of work. Impressive. Yeah, we've been writing a little, really small bit. Uh huh. So are you going to give us an update next week on how your story's doing? Are you going to do some writing this week and then share how that's going or sure. what? Okay, so next week we can get a Pokemon story update. And I would like to share some of my Pokemon with you guys sometime. Okay, now the way the camera's set up is if they're going to see it and focus, it's going to need to be pretty close to your face, okay? So go ahead and show us. What do you have? Um, I would like to uh, show you my uh, first ever EX. And he's my only EX right now. Okay. Rayquaza. All right, hold it back here. All right, what is the name? Rayquaza. Okay. He's one of the best Pokemon I have. Cool. I don't have any Pokemon. He does 100. No, I gave you two. Okay, I have Pokemons, and they're Skidoo downstairs. Skidoo and Go Go. But I use them as my good luck charms to help me when I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I don't actually fight with them. Okay, what else you got? Anything else you want to show us? Um. Maybe one more Pokemon? Oh, sure. I like to uh, share my Pokemon, which is one of my newest Pokemon. Okay. Which was the last one that I ever bought in a pack with some other Pokemon. Pyrar. Cool. What does yeah, he do? Pyrar. Uh, he does Scorching Fang. Ooh, okay. How many damage is that? 90. That's pretty good. How fast can he recharge? That's not a Pokemon thing then. I'm sorry. I thought it was. Where they like, have to recharge before they can attack. Uh, some t I don't know. Okay. Unless I don't know either. That's why I was asking. They can do it if they have enough strength. Okay. Cool. Hey, well, Daniel, thanks for sharing that stuff with our audience today of YouTubers. Do you think uh, they can give you some comments and emails? Yes. Sorry for Eliza laughing. Yeah. That's all right. All right. Let's get on with the rest of our show. Bye. All right, so welcome back everybody. Isn't it so cool to see what all of our kids are learning and how they pay attention and learn so many different things during the week. It's a lot of fun being a parent and being a homeschooler. So Liza, what is our show's topic this week? Pizza. Ooh, sounds like it's gonna taste as good as it sounds or something like that. Anyway, so the first question I had about pizza was how many pizzas are sold each year? Did we find an answer? You found an answer. Oh, I did find an answer. All right, so there are approximately 350 pizza slices made every second. So to put that in perspective, it's about 3 billion pizzas in the United States alone, all right, with the average American eating 46 pizzas. 
I couldn't find worldwide statistics, but there are so many variations on pizza that I'm sure the number is way more than that. But it does say 46 slices per American. Liza, are you an American? I'm half American, half, half Canadian. Canadian. Okay. All right, so here's my question for you. If you're supposed to eat 46 slices this year, how far along are you to those 46 slices? Half, one third, I don't know. Okay, but you're only half American. So theoretically, you could already be done if you were at half. True. We'll have to do some math. I wonder if Canadians eat the same number of slices. <laughs> if they eat more, then you might not be as far ahead. All right, but what do you want to cover? Well, I want to save my favorite one for last. Okay. So I'm going to go with my second, one of the ones I found. All it's right. how many pizzerias are in the United States? Ooh, can I guess? Guess. Four. Eh. Okay, go ahead. This is from pizza.com. Uh-huh. And they say that there are 61,269 pizzas rias in the United States. That's a lot. Okay, all right, how about we this? We've only been to a couple. We have been to a couple, and we like to go to the ones that are good. Not Pizza Hut. <sighs> Ooh, we can't say bad things. All right, moving on. So, October is National Pizza Month in the United States. That was another fact. Really? Yes. I don't know why. I thought October was some history month, but I guess it's National Pizza Month in the United States. I wonder if some of the pizzerias out there open up or like release new flavors or new toppings during that month. If you know something about it, leave us a note in the comments. All right, what else, Liza? What do you have next? Hmm, the top five pizza days. So top five pizza days. That would be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday. No? Okay, what are the top five pizza the days? The top five pizza days are when the most pizzas are sold out of all the year. Okay. And those are mostly the Super Bowl Sunday. Uh -huh. Everyone wants to stay home and watch it. Send a pizza guy to deliver it. New Year's Eve. Yep. Everyone wants to stay up late. Halloween. Candy, pizza, not really good together. Don't understand it. Oh, I think I can. You gotta get the kids out the door and you want a quick meal without having to put in a whole lot of effort. I'd go with pizza. We don't. Well, <laughs> we're different. Go ahead. And the night before Thanksgiving, you already cooked the turkey, you, you're getting the turkey in the oven, you don't want to do anything else for dinner, you're getting prepared for tomorrow. Pizza on the, pe call the pizza guy. Good to go. Okay. And then New Year's Day, you just woke up, it's 12 o'clock, you want to eat pizza. Well, maybe you wake up at 12 o'clock. I can't sleep in that far anymore. Well, I can't either because of the sun. All right, let's see here. Um, I need to see my other ones. Uh, which one should I pick next? Ooh, where history. Where do pizzas come from? I like that one. Hey, that's where I was going. <laughs> so where do pizzas come from? This is the first time we have the word pizza recorded in any documentation. It was written in Latin, all right, in a manuscript from AD 997. The manuscript was from a southern Italian town in Gaetia. Uh, the modern pizza was invented in Naples, Italy, and the dish and its variants have since become popular in many areas of the world. That's according to Wikipedia. Go ahead, Liza. What are you going to cover next? I covered where pizza came from. How about you cover the world's largest pizza? Ooh, that's my. F that was the one I was saving for last. Oh, I hope I didn't ask you to jump the gun. Go ahead. Where is it from? Well. It, the world's largest pizza was in Norway to pick and pay in South Africa. Okay. And according to the Genesis Book of Records, the pizza was 37.4 meters, mm -hmm. and that in feet is 122 feet and 8 inches. That's like huge. So when I was a kid and we had the kites, right? The kite string would be like 100 feet long. Feet, right and my kite would look so small at the end of that hundred feet so this pizza must have been huge like 37.4 meters is like just under like half a football field that's like 40 something yards half a football field yeah that's how big this pizza is I wonder how they cooked it I wonder what they made it out of actually it was 
What? The pizza was, not is, it was. Well, a pizza that big, they might still be eating it. When was this made? Tell me what's going on. December 8th, 1990. Okay, so that, that if that pizza was actually still a, a, here, it'd be over... For 25, almost 25 year old pizza? Do you want a 25 year old pizza? Now they did find honey in the pyramids that were still good, but I don't think a pizza after 25 years is gonna be any good. Nope. Would you eat a 25 year old pizza? If so, let us know in the comments below. All right, go ahead, what's next, Lou? Mm, the most popular toppings. No, 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 no. You didn't tell us how, many, how much flour it took them to make that pizza. Fine, we'll go to there next. How much flour it took for that pizza was 500 kilograms. 800 kilograms of cheese and 900 kilograms of tomato sauce. I'm probably guessing that they didn't have a big enough stove for this, since how big it was. I'm guessing they left it out in the sun since it was summertime in South Africa when they made it. Could have been. We might uh, ask you guys to help us out with research on that and let us know. Now, we've talked, to, you just used some big numbers, right? I mean, 122 feet, eight inches wide, that sort of stuff. I like numbers. So no one knows for sure how many pizza variations there are, but the number's gotta be huge, right? Because if I do sausage and cheese, that's one type of pizza, right? But if I just do cheese, that's a different type of pizza, right? Yeah. So each one of those is a different type of pizza. What is your favorite type of pizza? Anything with meat and cheese. Anything with meat and cheese. Okay, so you're not a veggie person then, huh? Dude, I don't eat vegetables that much. I'm asking you so we can tell the audience, right? But yeah, you don't eat vegetables, right? It's kind of my thing. I don't know why. Okay. I eat vegetables here and there. So Domino's uh, puts a lot of their information out online, and they put out all the possible topping combinations, right? And then a mathematician sat there and figured out what is the possible number of those combinations that work. Now, before we get to Domino's, because that's American pizza, and we can talk about whether it's early pizza or not later, there is a pizza place in Italy, all right, that has 500 variations of pizza on their menu. What? Yeah. So I was looking at the photo of this online, and we'll link to the source in the show notes. Uh, I was looking for the photo of this online, and it looked like you would need a magnifying glass to read all the different types of pizza that they made. 500 variations, one restaurant. Do they give you a magnifying glass? I don't think they did. I haven't been there yet, but... We gotta go there when we get back in the States. I don't know why, because you're only gonna eat the ones that have meat and cheese on them. Oh wait, it's in Italy. We gotta go to Italy. Right, and I don't know why we go, because you'd only eat the ones that have meat and cheese on them. So I'm not taking Sorry. you there. All right, so uh, at Domino's, the mathematician did the cool math on this stuff, and there are 67,108,864 possible topping combinations at Domino's from a few years ago. Wow. Now, if they added more toppings, this number would get bigger. So I don't know what it is now. Maybe they could tell us if somebody in the audience really likes to crunch the math. Okay, but that's talking about toppings. Didn't you want to talk about toppings? Oh, yeah. Before I get to my popular toppings, uh -huh. I want to tell you that 62% of Americans prefer meat toppings. So I'm not the only one. Okay, you're not the only one. I understand that. And 36 prefer vegetables. Hawaiian person right here. Yeah, I love Canadian bacon and pineapple. It is absolutely my favorite. And I even like extra pineapple. I don't know why that is, but I just do. <laughs> and I can't get it over here the way I like it. We have so. Pizza Hut. It's not the same. Okay, let's keep going. So what are we looking at here? We're going to throw this chart up for our audience. Where do we get this one from, Lou? We got it from pizza, oh wait, businessindustry.com. Business Insider. Insider, sorry. No, it's fine. We, we get to reading words, sometimes we read them too fast. Okay, so, all right. We should ask the audience what they think their number one topping is, but we won't. We're just gonna tell you, because you can't tell us right now what you think it is. Well, what is it, Liza? Pepperoni. Pepperoni, with how many, what percentage? 36%. All right, what comes in number two after pepperoni? Sausage, okay. which is at 14%. And then the next one after that? Mushrooms, 12%. Okay, so I wanna ask you this one. Anchovies are a 
popularly mentioned topping, but they're not a popularly placed topping. They're only 2%. They only take up 2% of all the pizzas in the United States. Okay, chicken beats them out by like three times as much. So does olives and onions and beef. Yeah, so anchovies are not really that popular. Now, which cartoon characters that live in the sewers like pizza? The rats? The rats, no. Ratatouille? No, not Ratatouille. <laughs> Ratatouille is just, oh, that's, that's French. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's oh. not really. I don't know the character. Are you just never show me? They're ninjas. <gasps> Ninja Mutant Teenager Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I get confused. It's okay. Now, what's really interesting though about how we tell stories is that the stories of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and them eating pizza is something I remember growing up with when I was your age, and now you're growing up with them again, and it's pretty cool. And every time we watch the show and we see people eat pizza, guess what we think of doing? Teenager mint washing the really. Yeah, we think of eating more pizza. Hey, it's been a fun episode. We learned about pizza, didn't we? Yeah. All right, and we got to see Rainy and Daniel and Michael share some of the stuff that they were interested in. But we forgot about us. No, I'm not gonna cover us this day. We've done a lot. Pizza is awesome. But do you sure. have something you wanna share? Well, I've been, I, not much. I'm still working on my story. Cool. Any further along this week? Not much. I'm. You may not. Did I, I did talk about this last week, I think. But I, me and my friends are writing stories together where we each have a character and we're each writing it. It's pretty awesome. So my character is a princess of light or protector. And I have to write a story, and my friends have over 200 pages. You did mention that last week. And then we talked about how your writing's never finished and how to work on modes of writing. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry I was rude and tried to cut you off just there. That actually is really cool, and I hope you give us more reports on that. Now, we just announced that Daniel can be reached at daniel at horserockets.com. Where do you think your email address is at? Eliza at horserockets.com. At horserockets.com. Sorry. Okay. And if you want to get in touch with me, I'm Jacob at horserockets.com. Uh, we'd be happy to listen to comments about the show and suggestions for any episodes that you may want to see in the future. Uh, thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing those comments and replies soon. Bye. Bye.